Hello everybody and welcome back uh, for another video. Today we are going to be doing some slab cutting. I am Nickel and Copper and today we are going to do some slab cutting with calcium fluoride. A few videos back we did one using a gold unit cell and as you can see here when you look at this calcium fluoride structure it looks eerily similar to the gold unit cell. Uh, we have these calcium atoms occupying these uh, corner sites here on the unit cell as well as on the face. So with respect to the calcium atoms, meaning if I were to delete all of the fluorine atoms, we would have an FCC crystal that is identical to the gold unit cell we previously cut. But today we are going to do that same procedure using this new unit cell because it is a little bit more tricky. And I want to make sure that you all have the ins and outs in case you face difficult tasks like this in research because or for your own uh, purposes whatever they may be and the reason is because I, I find this information not readily available online and so I am using that as a motivation to sort of spread the knowledge okay so what we want to do is we want to cut and expose the 111 plane of this unit cell and how are we going to do that so first thing we're going to do is expand the boundaries. I will expand them three by three by three. Now in the previous video, I was expanding them five by five by five, but we also didn't have the anions present in the crystal. And they do <clears throat> slow things down a bit because they are computationally a little expensive, uh, even if running just this program on my laptop. Okay, so now what we are going to do is identify the 111 plane. And I'm actually going to switch to red here for a bit of a contrast. And here is the 111 plane. And I'm going to move that a little bit inside of the cell. And as you can see here, uh, there is my 111 plane. And now, what is the procedure after you've identified the 111 plane? It is to put it perpendicular to the plane of your screen and to now identify periodicity in the direction of the plane, uh, in the direction normal to the plane. So the direction normal to the plane would be uh, straight, so to speak, or, or following my cursor. And I have to identify periodicity in this dimension. And this can be difficult for these sort of crowded structures. So what I'm going to do is I am going to actually cut below this line because I, I don't need these atoms down here anyways. So I just select them and then press delete. And I zoom back in. And okay, now let's identify periodicity. So what I'm going to do is rotate the crystal so that the plane is on the same plane as my screen. And now, actually, I, I think it's actually easier if I do it this way how I'm doing it. So it is still perpendicular to my screen. And you can actually see it probably most readily from this angle. Periodicity is going to be along this direction here. So now we have to decide how many over that is. So what I'm going to do is make a new plane and let's type in five. Okay, so not, not that's not quite where I wanted it to be. I want it to be one more over, so let's make it six. Okay, perfect. So now what I'm saying is that periodicity in this new unit cell I'm going to cut uh, occurs like uh, around this distance for this dimension. So basically, if I wanted to make a new unit cell and uh, have the calcium atoms be the corner, you can already kind of see how such a unit cell would take place. So now I'm going to reorient the crystal so that the... Uh, one on one plane is how I had originally cut it. And now the next thing I want to do is I want to define lattice plane, a lattice plane that is perpendicular to the one on one unit cell. So I happen to just know off the top of my head that the minus one one zero plane is perpendicular. And I'm going to change the color to dark blue here for some more contrast. And I'm going to put the distance at zero. So let's now rotate the unit cell. Okay, 
So now, as I did with the 111 plane, I have to identify periodicity with respect to this plane. And I do think it is it is much easier to see that it would it would just be if you follow my cursor over like this. So to me, that looks like it's over one calcium atom. So I will click new and I'm still have the same Miller indices and I will select a one. OK, perfect. Now, what we have to do is we have to cut around these uh, these planes. Or what you could do is you could identify a third plane that is perpendicular to both of these planes, perpendicular to the 111 plane, perpendicular to the minus 110 plane. But I find uh, that to be a very crowded sort of thing to do. So what I like to do is just cut around these planes as they are right now. So I'll select OK. And I'll take my cursor, select this uh, sort of white arrow with a box here, and delete the atoms on top of the red. So now we've cut around the red, and now we are going to cut around the blue. It's probably best to get up, make sure you're precise here. Now I didn't fully cut around the red actually. I have these fluorine atoms on top, but they're a little close, a little closer comfort right now. So I'll just cut like this. Then I will turn the unit cell. Okay, so now I have to define periodicity in this in this dimension. And it's very straightforward to do that. Uh, I think it's it's pretty obvious where the periodicity is. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to cut here. Oh, okay, let me first just say this. I'm going to say the periodicity occurs here and here. Okay, which means I want to cut here. Okay, and then I will also cut there. Okay, now. Here's what's tricky. I have to decide what the corner of my new unit cell will be. And actually you can see that having this plane be a face of my unit cell is not actually ideal because it doesn't have any well-defined corners, so to speak. But if you can see, if I were to take both of these red uh, planes and shift them down a little bit, I can actually uh, identify a better a corner for my unit cell. So let me go back to lattice planes just for uh, the purpose of illustration. Three, let's do 2.75. Oh, that actually shifted the bottom one right where I wanted it to be. And then this one, six, let's do 5.75. Perfect. So as you can see, now I have, uh, if I press OK, I have a new unit cell formed where I can have these fluorine atoms be the corner of my unit cell. So now what I will do is I have to open up an Excel spreadsheet and you can do this now. You can pause the video, take a second, and you're going to set up a table like this. This is how we are going to define the transformation matrices needed uh, to perform our change of basis or transformation of basis vectors for our new matrix. And so pause the video, set that up and then come back here. What we're going to do now, uh, once you're back in here, is we are going to select this atom as our origin for the new unit cell. You could select any atom, uh, but you it would it's much more complicated. Uh, it's simpler if you select this atom because we sort of set it up to be this way. And so this atom with respect to the original, or in terms of the original basis vectors of the original unit cell, which was this type of unit cell, is going to be 0 0.75, 0 1.75, and so I will come here to my Excel spreadsheet and I will type in those values, 0 0.75, 0 1.75, then I go back to my program and I'm going to now decide what dimension is going to be my new A, B, and C dimension. And so for the A dimension, I would, I would like to choose this to be my A dimension. So you have 0 0.25, 1.25, 1.25, 0 0.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25
0 0.25, 1.25. And then in the B dimension, I have 1.25, 1.25, 0.25. .25, .25. So it's just reverse actually. So I can go like, go like this. Okay. And in the C dimension, what I would like to do is have this be translated this way from my origin, translated up. So 1 1.75, 2.75, 1.25, 1.75, 2.75, 1.25. Okay. Now what I have to do is I have to define these basis vectors, A, B, and C, relative to the new origin I selected. And I'm going to simply do that by just subtracting each one of these values from its respective component of the origin. And so you do this in Excel just like this. And so I have I3 minus H3. If I scroll down here, I have I4 minus H4. Uh, I5 minus H5, and then simply across like this. So you have J3 minus H3, J4 minus H4, K4 minus H4. And here, this is going to be the transformation matrix for my new um, unit cell. And now it's probably best to double check everything. So our origin is 0 0.75, 1.75, 0.25. Let's go back and double check. 7517525. Okay. Let's check A. 0 0.25, 0 0.25, 1.25. 0 0.25, 1.25, 1.25. Okay. And I need a 1.25 here. Okay. That's, that's good that I did that. And then our B direction, 1.25, 1 1 1.25, 1 0.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, 1.25, and our C dimension is 1.75, 2.75, so 1, 2, 1.7 and then the next one is 1.25 okay so this looks good um, so this will be our new transformation matrix and let us go back here now and open up a new unit cell so here's the original unit cell where the 111 plane is an internal plane and so the currently exposed planes of this unit cell will be um, like this plane on top here would be the 001 surface uh, this plane here would be the 0, 1, 0 surface, etc. And so how I do a basis transformation is I go to edit, edit data, unit cell, transform. Now let's look at our matrix. Minus 0 0.5. So this top left corner is 0 0.5. All negative but one. Okay, I have a one in the bottom left and the right column is all ones. So I have one, one, one. Select okay, yes, accept the changes and press apply. Okay, and now we have had a change of basis of our unit cell. And uh, if I can, I'm going to take a snippet here of this. And if you can see with respect to our original unit cell, we have we definitely have something that looks very different. And now for our new unit cell, you can see that this plane here, this is the uh, 111 uh, Miller indice where the 111 plane in this unit cell to the left is actually internal. And now the previously external planes here on the left, like the 001 surface is now an internal plane in the new unit cell. 
And so this is, it was tricky uh, here because you had to account for these extra fluorines and we had to do a shift of the lattice planes uh, towards the end. And uh, what we can now do is we can take this unit cell and expand it further if we wanted to make a slab. So we would then go to edit data, unit cell, transform. Uh, and what we could do, so we, we would have to accept this. First, we'd have to save it. So export data. I could say unit cell 1x1x. One one uh, this would be the 111 plane, dot VASP. Save it with the Cartesian coordinates. And then I will open it. OK. So now here's my new calcium fluoride unit cell. And now, if I want to expand this out, what I do is I go to Edit Data, Unit Cell, Transform, and I would do, let's say I wanted to make a 111 surface, I could do 4 by 4 by 1, yes. And here I have my 111 surface. And you can see this is actually, this is pretty large. This would be pretty uh, computationally intensive, but nonetheless, it is what you're looking for. And so that about wraps it up. If you have any questions or comments, please leave them down below. And I appreciate your viewership. And please let me know what I can do to help you. Okay, take care, everyone. Have a nice day.